Hello gamers, welcome to a Teesside Times video. Today, we've got a new book to look at, Codex Adeptus Mechanicus. Let's go and have a look. Okay, as usual for Games Workshop, we've got some lovely artwork in the inside cover. We've got some Titans, Skatari, and a Tech Priest engine here. Lovely, very well done. Again, more beautiful artwork. Absolutely lovely here. Introduction, gorgeous pictures there. And then we have this beautiful piece of artwork here, and it's lovely, absolutely gorgeous. You've got Gene Stealers and Tyranids attacking, and then we've got the Adeptus Mechanicus. You've got Skatari, a Rustark here, slicing this one up, Castellan Robots, and then Dragoons in the background, and then this really lovely drawing of a Tech Priest Dominus up here. And I really wish Games Workshop would, rele would, would release a model that looked like this. It would look absolutely beautiful. Just imagine it hovering on the floor with all the ten all the like the cables holding it up. Would look absolutely gorgeous. Maybe an idea to try and convert something like this if I ever get the time. Anyway, then we have a bit of fluff background on. The Adeptus Mechanicus, again, some more lovely drawings. Talking about the Forge Worlds, what forces they have. And then these are just pages of fluff and background with some absolutely beautiful artwork, as usual from Games Workshop. A map of the galaxy, as it is at the moment. All the Forge Worlds dotted around in it. And then... The iconography, the iconography, hope I pronounced that right, of the Adeptus Mechanicus going through. So obviously we've got Mars, which is all red. Everybody's familiar with those guys. Now Lucius, again, red and cream it looks like. What's this one? Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this one. Agrippna. Agrippna sounds very Roman. Black, cream and red. That would be a lovely colour scheme if you got that right. And Stygius, black, grey and red. Once again, these are lovely colour schemes. Um, Grier, greyer, red. And it looks like the darker red. A bit more cream in the background. Very lovely. Metallica, which is very white with red markings. That would look absolutely gorgeous done. And then we have Riser, which is orange. So lots of selection there. They're the named, I think these are the named Forge Worlds. These are ones which will become with special rules. And then we have just some separate ones, a bit of history on others. So we've got Triplex Fal, different color scheme. Damus, again, a gray blue, would look very nice. Foss Prime, which has got a pied colour scheme, red and yellow. That would look, it'll be different, it'll be interesting to do. And Griffin 4, which is a greeny sort of grey right, I think. Very nice. That would look lovely. Pictures of Castle and Robots in different colour schemes. Again, very nice. Some ideas there. And then Mechanicus Knights. Which, in case you didn't know, the knights, Mechanicus knights, are actually in this army. We'll get to that later. But we've got cool schemes for these guys. A bit of history on them all. Raven, House Raven, House Vulcan, House Trannis, House Crast. Again, lovely pictures. And then, as usual in Games Workshop, we have a timeline of some history, some battles. Worth a read through. Lots of interesting stuff. Give you a bit of idea of the background, an idea for the fluff for your own armies. Worth a read. And this goes over two pages. And then, again, this is the, the, the picture that's on the inside cover, but it's actually in colour now. And it's lovely, absolutely gorgeous. And you've got Rust Stalkers, not Rust, Rust Stalker, um, some infiltrators. And the Titans in the background, which just look great. Really lovely picture. 
and then want to the individual segments of the army for each character and unit. So we have Belisarius Koal, lovely model, lovely picture, a bit of background for him. Again, we have the Tech Priest Dominus, and you see a Castellan Robots, Datasmiths, both the Electro Priests, Destroyers and Breaches, and all the other units, so Vanguard, well, Rangers and Vanguard, and this picture here, which I absolutely love. This is one of the reasons I've decided... Well, sorry, knocked the table. This is one of the reasons why I decided to collect Skatari, firstly, and then Adap Adeptus Mechanicus now. Absolutely love this picture, and this is the colour scheme I went for. The yellow just looks great, doesn't he? The bright blue stands out. Really good picture. Um, other than that, we've got the rest of the units, so Infiltrators, Rust Stalkers, the Dragoons, and then the Younger June Collars, and it goes on to the night. So we get a bit of history, a bit of fluff on all of the units. And tell you how they all interact, and then one to the pictures. As usual, this is Games Workshop. All these models are beautiful. Um, they're amazingly well painted and put together. So we've got Bellas House Call here. Absolutely beautiful model. His axe, all his bionics on him. Absolutely beautiful. I may have to pick one up so I can use him in my army. It's not a hardship, he's lovely. I'll be doing that eventually. Then we've got an overview picture of full Skatari and Mechanicus there. Again, absolutely crack picture, bit of everything. So you've got Dragoons, Robots and Skatari at the front here. Really, really nice. And then other units and the Metallica army here, which is absolutely striking. We have them in this creamy white, creamy white, and red markings, and it's striking, absolutely lovely. I'd love to see these on the board. I'd love to see somebody with an army of them. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Okay, and then we have other pictures. So you've got the Tech Priest Dominus, which is a lovely model. My only issue with this model is, although it comes with separate different weapons you can arm it with, so a different um, gun and different pistol. It's for still the same pose. I wish Games Workshop would release a multi-pose model for this. It's a lovely model, don't get me wrong, but if they did another one, so you could have two Tech Priest Dominuses, which didn't look exactly the same. That's my only issue. I know people can convert them, but I, sometimes I don't have the time to do that. It'd be nice just to have a separate model so you can put that on. If anyone's got any ideas where you could, how you could do that, or if there's a if there's a model out there you could use instead, please leave a comment and let me know. Anyway, that's my rant over about them. It's still a lovely model, absolutely gorgeous. The Electro Priests, these have grown on me over the last few months. Um, I'm not too I'm such a big fan of these guys with the fists or whatever gloves here, but the guys with the staffs look really cool. And then we have another army painted up. I think this is the riser colour scheme. So it's like orangey yellow. Very nice again. Different than red. And striking again. Looks lovely. And some more pictures of different Castell and robots. Uh, units of Vanguard. We've all seen these before, but they're still lovely models. And knights. And knights are always lovely. Great models. Okay, and some more pictures down here. Oh, forgot these guys. Engineers and Engineers are now in the army. A HQ choice. And these are lovely models again. Absolutely cracking. This, this one's lovely, isn't it? The yellow. Gonna have to try and do that for my army. And then we have Rust Stalkers and the Infiltrators. I love these models. These guys look so intimidating. Um, robotic cyborg assassins. Beautiful models. And these guys, again, just look alien enough to be weird, if that makes sense. But still human. Innocent. And for lovely, the helmets 
just a strange, but it works. And we've got some more pictures down here, very beautiful painted models. And then we have the Force Actress. I don't even know how to say that. Anybody does apologize for that. I'll cut that out. And then we have this page which goes on about how to collect armies basically. Um, and it shows you this small force, which and it goes through here about how this is patrol. It's got one heavy, the younger, a troops choice, the rangers, and a tech priest dominus as your HQ. And that's a perfectly legal army. Coincidentally, that's exactly what you get in the get started box, which is a great box. But as it is, you've got your troops, HQ, heavy support. Really good army, you can put that on board, start playing straight away. It's only small, but it's got a bit of everything and gets you playing, which is really, really good. And the next page, it expands on that to make this into battalion. So you get, you still got your rangers and your on your dune caller and your dominus, but they've gone through, have the four more stuff in really. You've got another HQ, Belisar's Call, some more troops, destroyers, and Vanguard, and then you've got your elites, so you've got infiltrators, some priests, robots there, more heavy support, a fast attack as a dragoon, and a knight there. And it just goes through what everything is and how it goes into the army. And I like that. It a lot of people might just be picking these books up for the first time and looking and see how the army should go together. And this is just a good picture of an army. This is a nice looking army. If you turn up with this, you're going to have a fun game. It's not optimised. It's not going to do one thing and one thing only. It's going to do a bit of everything, and that's good. It's giving people ideas, advertising what the game can be. If I if I was fighting somebody with this army, I'm going to have a good game. It's going to be fun. There's going to be lots of different things going on, and that's what the hobby needs to promote. There will always be people out there, and I do it myself, you go for Specialised armies, close combat stuff, uh, shooting armies. But this, the start level, that's a beautiful example of an army. And that's what the hobby needs to be. We need to get people interested and show them the whole, um, whole of the game, really. And that's what beautiful page, beautiful models. That's going to get people interested. Okay, um, now on to the rules. We've done all the pretty pictures. We've done all the fluff in there. And that's worth reading through. Good read. Lovely pictures to inspire you, and now onto the rules. Um, the main thing is, and if this appears to be a lot of the armies are going this way, Space Marine chapters, the um, tra Trade Legion chapter, like chapter tactics, their chapter names are getting this. So now we have dogmas. So you choose Forge World, and then you choose I'll have Mars Dogma, I'll have the Rise Dogma. Or Metallica Dogma, and we'll come back to that. But you've got to choose for each detachment, you choose that, and that's going to affect how your army works, basically. And then we've got knights, household knights, and the knights are part of Adeptus Mechanicus, so they're not going to benefit from mechanicals, which we'll get onto that, but they're still in part of the army, so they're just not going to get mechanicals. It's, they're still very good, don't get me wrong. And then we've Canicles and these guys. These, every turn, for those people who have played, it's pretty much exactly the same as it was last edition. For those who've never played Adeptus Mechanicus, every turn you can roll a dice and you get a special rule. Yeah, for everything with the Canicles of the Omnishire special rule, which is pretty much everything apart from the Knights. Um... Yeah, you roll dice and you, you get that special rule. Or you can pick them. However, if you pick them, pick which one you want, you, you can't choose that again. Whereas if you roll and you get the same one two turns in a row, that's fine. There's pros and cons of both. Some armies are going to... Some of the dogmas allow you to work around this bit. But basically, there's a couple of these which are miles better than the other. 
the best all round one is Shroud Slam. Gives you cover save, regardless of being the open or not. You're going to be getting generally a plus one to your cover save. Really, really good. That's the one you're going to be, you want a lot of the time because it's going to protect your units. You've got other stuff like Chant of a Mossless Fist, which is we will ones in combat. Again, that's useful. If you're in combat, if you built your army for combat, that's going to be very good. Invocation of Machine Might, plus one strength. It's, it's got its uses, but it's not. It's situational. Same as the Chant of a Mossless Fist, Force 2. If you're in combat, yeah, really good. Benediction of Romanshire, we will ones for all your shooting. That's useful as well. Um, yeah, it says what it is. It's going to be useful. You're going to get more shots in. Very useful. But this one, Shao Charm, keeps your men alive. Plus one cover save, really, really good. Oh, plus one cover, just plus one save, really, is if you uncover. Others, let's see if the Electromancer. <sighs> I don't rate this one much, really. Uh, roll a d6 for each enemy unit that is within one of any affected unit. Okay, that's cool. You lot of your army if you're in combat. On a roll of a six, the unit being rolled for suffers d3 mortal wounds. So, if you're in combat, or within one, you're going to be in combat, and you've got three enemy units around you, roll dice on a six for suffer d3 mortal wounds. So on average, you're going to need six models, six units around you to get one unit affected and suffer two more wounds. It's not great, I don't think. And then we have Incarnation of the Iron Soul. We will all fail morale tests. Uh, that's, it's all right. But not amazing. I've, the best one, Shout Sam. So, now on to for unit entries and start off with the Sars Call and he's still a beast. He's tough. He's got toughness six. He's got eight wounds and four attacks as well as weapon skill two plus and ballistic skill two plus. This guy's nasty. He's got two plus save. He's got refractor field off a five plus invulnerable. He's going to take a lot of shots to even hurt him. And then self repair mechanism. He's going to take, regain, start up every one of your turns, D3 lost wounds. So unless you kill him outright, he's going to just keep coming back. He's going to tank a lot of damage. He can heal units uh, within three of him. And he getting a wound back or D3 wounds if it's an Adeptus Mechanical. A wound back if it's an Imperium model. Yeah, So that's for this army, that's Imperial Knights. You're going to be getting a wound back on them, which could make a difference. Adeptus Mechanicus models, that's D3. D3 wounds back. Really, really good. Let's just check, see if the Knights aren't Adeptus Mechanicus, because if so, that's really, really good. Are Adeptus Mechanicus? No. So they're only going to get one wound back. Everything else is going to get D3 wounds back. Very useful. He's going to keep your models alive. And Ben Barras, Archmages, while he's on the table, you can add one or subtract one from rolling on mechanicals of the Omnishire. Giving you more chance of getting Shao Sam, getting the ones you want and need, especially when we look at the dogmas. Really useful for him. And Lord of Mars, you can reroll. Any hit rolls in the shooting phase for friendly Mars units within six. So within six inches, everything's shooting is going to be re-rolling hits. Very useful. He's got a solar atomizer. Salt D3. Strength 10. So that's ruining pretty much everything at least on 3+. Plus. Minus 4. Most things aren't getting saved. D3 damage. And if it's in half range, D6 damage. That's very useful. That's going to hurt. It's going to take tanks. That's going to kill a lot of things. Arc Scourge. Uh, combat attacks. Times 2 strength, so strength 10. Attacking vehicle does damage to D3. Not bad. 
is Mech Adala right hive. I hope I pronounce that right. Uh, strength user, so strength 5. Each time Belisar's call fights, he can make d6 addition, 2d6 additional attacks with his weapon. That's good, because that's going to help him kill hordes. So he's not going to be bogged down by stuff, because he can hurt them as well. And Zomshire Axe. Uh, strength plus 1, so strength 6. Minus 2 saves, 2 damage. Nasty. He's going to put a lot of damage out. Yeah, He's a fair few points. I think he's about 250, I think. and But he's tough. He's going to hurt. He's going to help your models by keeping them alive and letting them be all hits. Very, very good. If you're, if you're doing Mars, if you're collecting a Mars Forge World army, you're going to have him. He's absolutely beautiful. Lovely model. And he's really, really good for your army. Okay, the next HQ. Tech Priest Dominus. Same, you've seen model, lovely model. He's not as tough as Belisar's Call, but he's probably half a point. Better skill hitting on threes, still good. Blister skill hitting on twos, very good. He's only strength four, he's only toughness four, so he's not as tough, but he's got five wounds and he's got two plus save. It's going to take a lot of damage. And he also gets Master, uh, where is it? Master of Bionics, beginning feature your turns, this model gains D3. Lost wounds. So unless you can kill him, he's going to keep coming back. He's Lord of Machine Cult, so any unit within one, we was or any unit within six, we was ones in shooting phase. Again, very good, helping you guys do more damage. Master machines, he can heal units. Yeah, very good. D three wounds. On Adeptus Mechanicus, or one wound on Quest Art Mechanicus, which is the Knights. Very useful, and he has a fact field. You can have guns, he's got a different choice. He's got Eradication Ray, which is heavy D3, strength 6 minus 2, and within 8, it becomes AP 4 minus 4, AP minus 4, and damage D3. That's useful, but you have to be very close. Macro Stubber, lots of shots, strength of 5 shots. Four, strength 4 minus well, 100 one damage. That's not bad. Bulk High Blaster, this is one I like. Heavy 3. Strength 6, so it's wounding a lot of things on 3s. Roll of a 6 to wound, it's a mortal wound. Anything that's dishing out mortal wounds is useful and that's very good. And then we've got the Phosphor Serpenter. Strength 5, salt 1, minus 1. And you don't get cover save. That's useful as well. And he has his axe. What do we know what that does? Our last HQ, as we mentioned earlier, is the Tech Priest Engines here. And these guys used to be an elite, but now they've been moved to, up to HQ choice. And that's really, really good because although he has, he has very little options, all he comes with is a last pistol, the Omnis, Omniscient Axe, and Servo Arm. He's cheap. I think he's about 52 points a model. And he's, he's good. He's still keeping your models alive. He can do I mean you have a moving phase, this model can repair a single friendly forge world vehicle, Miss Aspen Military Vehicle or Crescent Mechanicus or Knight. If model can repair this forge world or Aspen Military, that's D3 wounds. If it's a knight, it's one wound. Useful, he's not going to keep all your models alive. Because it's a vehicle, but he's still useful. He'll and he's cheap. I think. Tech Priest Dominus is about 135 points and he's 52. So you can get two of those for the same price as Tech Priest Dominus. If you need to fill out HQ slots, these are the guys you're going to go for. Nice and cheap. They're not going to help your forces that much, but they're cheap and that's useful. And then, one to troops choices. Skatai Rangers. And these guys are good. Their basic troop choice, fair, not the stats. Movement 6, so not slow. Weapon skill 4+, plus. that's pretty average for anything that's not an elite unit. This is skill 3+, plus. so they're hitting on 3s, which is useful. Strength 3, toughness 3, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6, 4 plus save, and the, carrot, the range alpha, leadership 7, 2 attacks. Bog standard for troops, really. Come with a gal, gal, galvanic rifle. 
which is basic weapon is really good. 13 inch range. Sit them in backfield of your objective on your in your backfield on an objective. And we can shoot a lot. Rapid fire one. So within 15 inches, you're going to get two shots. Very useful. Strength four. Again, ruining really most things on four plus. Um damage one. It doesn't have an AP. However, if you want a six to hit or oh, six to wound, you're getting minus one AP. That's useful, but you'll forget it. This is the sort of rule I'll, I forget all the time. And I don't know about you guys, but it's just, it's a forgettable rule. It's not, yeah, you'll remember it much sometimes, but you'll forget it sometimes as well. And it's, yeah, it's all right. Don't get me wrong. Uh, they can have up to as good special weapons, up to two Skatai ranges, may replace their galvanic rifle with one item from the special weapon list. And the special weapon list is, what have we got? Arc rifle. Plasma Cavalier, Transamic Aquabus. So the Arc Rifle is the anti-vehicle one. It's That's not bad. I think Strength 6 does some extra damage against vehicles. Plasma Cavalier, Plasma Good. Again, Plasma has always been good. And the Transamic Aquabus. That's the big sniper gun. And that's not, that's not bad. Allows you to snipe characters. You could have two of those in a unit of these. You could have two of those in a unit of these guys and try and snipe out characters. It's thing strength six. Let's have a look. Gotta find them in this book. Yeah, let's have a look. Transceranic. Aquabus, range 60, so you are hitting everywhere. Heavy 1, strength 7, that's useful. Minus 2, D3 wounds. Yeah, D3 damage is going to do. Model car move and fired, can target characters. Each time you wound 6, there's weapon that inflicts a mortal wound in addition to its normal damage. That's not bad, it's useful. You have a couple of balls around hitting on freeze. You're going to wound a lot of characters on freeze. Any Imperial Guard or Eldar characters, you're wounded on twos. Minus two. That's more saves are going to be down to fives. If that, if not worse, DP damage, useful. However, there are 25 points of a model each of those guns. If you're planning on having a lot of ranges, a lot of Skatari, take a squad of these guys and have two of the rifles in, of the Aquabusters in. Or, if you've got 10 of them, 10 models, have three. And that becomes a nasty unit. Yeah. They'll kill characters, they'll hurt them, they'll make characters scared. Which is a really good way to run these guys. However, and the way I'm thinking of running them is to just have a squad of five. A squad of five of these guys is 40 points. They're cheap. You put them on, on, on you put them on an objective in your own deployment zone. Hide them, keep them out line for the sight of the enemy, and just say, hold the objective 40 points. It's nothing. The enemy's not going to be able to send anything to target them unless there's nothing else to kill. So these guys should sit on an objective all game, really, without without getting targeted. Very good. Saying either way will work. Okay, the next unit of troops, Skatai Vanguard, same stats as Rangers. And these guys come with the Radium Carbine. Range 18, Assault 3, Strength 3, so not great, but these guys can move, they can advance. And still fire, yeah, it's on minus 1, so we'll only be on 4s. But that's a lot of shots and they can move quickly. And each time you make a rune of 6 for this weapon, this hit inflicts 2 damage instead of 1. Nice little sting of the tail for them. They're good. Uh, up to scoots up to two can replace their radium carbines with special weapons and if you have ten you can have a third. There you go. Three of them. You can give them the, the rifle, the aquabuses if you want, but these guys want to be advancing. Arc rifles or plasma cavaliers. Yeah, you'll do damage. Plasma cavalier, strength seven. If it's overcharged to strength eight, you're gonna hurt things. If they are quite forth. 
strength six, and that's going to hurt things. Again, same for Rangers. Either keep them cheap, you can have unit Vs for 45 points, or five, or units of 10 fully loaded with kit, and have lots of them. These have a... These guys and the Rangers, Bionics, six plus and runable save. So they're going to be saving the odd last cannon shot if it's ever targeted at them. And these guys have rad saturation. Reduces the toughness of enemy units other than vehicles by one if they have been one off any Skatai Vanguard unit. Useful. These guys, you can push these into combat, tie up your enemy's loot unit, then send your close combat specialists in and your enemy are going to drop their toughness down. You do that on some marines, they're now toughness free, which is going to make it easy, killing them easier. You do that on some, some of the big guys, like the big demons, which could be toughness 8, big monsters, and you drop them down to toughness 7. It means your close combat specialists are hitting even easier. Very good. Good unit, all round. Vanguard and Rangers are good. They're not going to kill tons unless you kick them out, but they're cheap enough and they do the jobs. Basic troops. Next troop choice Catfan Preachers. Uh, let's have a look. Movement 6, so fairly fast. Well, average speed. Weapon skill 4 plus. This is skill 4 plus, so about average. Strength 5, toughness 5, so the tough and the strong. 3 wounds each. Going to take a lot of killing. 3 attacks. Leadership 7, 3 plus. So they're not bad, they're, they're, they're tough. And we've got three attacks we can hit hard. Arc Heavy Rifle. Range 36, Heavy 2, so that's not bad. Strength 6, minus 2, D3 damage. When attacking a vehicle, this weapon has a damage of D6. This is good, don't get me wrong, it's a not bad weapon. However, when attacking a vehicle, this weapon has a damage D6. That looks really cool. To look at strength six, most vehicles are going to be strength seven, they're going to be toughness seven, if not toughness eight. So you wound them on fives, yeah. Which, if you had a lot of shots, you're going to get, get a few through and you're going to do lots of damage. However, you've only got two shots, you have unit three Vs with heavy arc rifles, you're hitting on fours, so you're going to get three hits on average. If you're lucky, one wound, and then. It's only minus two AP. We could save it. I, nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bother. The torsion cannon. Range twenty four, so it's it's average range. Heavy one, strength eight, minus four D six. So it's a slightly weaker last cannon with a less range. And again, it's one shot. So three of them, three shots. If you're lucky, you hit twice. At best, you might get two wounds on something and do 2d6 damage. But it's only heavy one. Heavy one, and you're hitting on fours. I just don't rate it. It's only 24. If these were like a 16th range, you could sit in backfield with Tech Priest and use them as long range fire support, but it's only 24 inches. So you're going to have to be mid table to do anything, really, to do any damage. I just no, I just don't see the point of those two. Arc Claw, this is the one I come with. Plus one strength, so strength six, not bad. Minus one AP, that's alright. One damage against a vehicle, it's D3 damage. Which is alright, but again, it's going to suffer from the same problem for heavy arc rifles. It's only strength six. Yeah. You're going to be wounding most vehicles on fives. Only minus one. Most vehicles have three plus save. So it's, I'm just going to save it. I, and you've only got three tax each, so nine if you even you get there, all three of you have nine tax. Hit on fours, say so five hits. You probably might get two through, and then you might get, be lucky to get one worth of D3 damage through. The other choice, Hydraulic Claw. Strength times two, so strength ten. That's useful because you win marines on twos. Minus minus one. 
So yeah, so maybe he'll ruin the Marine on two, and we're going to get four plus save. D3 damage, that's not bad, so it's like a poor man's power claw. And then minus one to hit when attacking this weapon. And you only hit on fours normally. And you're minus one. So hitting on fives. And you've only got three attacks. So again, unit three gets in the combat. It hits on five, so you're hitting three times. Yeah, you've got a wound, so, let's just, so even if you wound all fours three times, and it's only minus one. So most, yeah, most things are going to have 50-50 chance of saving that. Most most things you're going to want to be attacking with a hydraulic claw are going to have 3 plus save at least. So you'll be lucky to get one or two shots through that. And it's only doing D3 damage. I don't know. Heavy battle servitors. They can move their heavy weapons without any penalty, but can only advance D3. Eh. Yeah. That's useful, but these guns, I just don't rate them. Bionics, invulnerable save of 6+. plus. <sighs> these are tough. Yeah, they'll take some damage to kill. However, I don't think Catfan Breachers will ever do much damage in return. They're not... I, I personally don't think these guys are a good choice, especially when our next and last troops choice is the Catfan Destroyers. Yeah, and these guys, movement six, weapon skill four, ballistic skill four, so exactly the same stats, apart from they have one less attack and one less save. So only four plus save, and we've only got two attacks. However, the guns, we can come with either Heavy Grav or Plasma Calvin as our main weapon. Heavy grab, 30 inch range. So again, without out outranging most of the breaches. Heavy five, five shots. Unit three of these is 15 shots. Strength five, yeah, again, you'll be wounding most things on threes, infantry, vehicles wound on fives. Minus three. So most things are going to be down to six plus saves. If you go look at Marines and most tanks, six plus save, one damage. Not bad, not great. However, here, if a target has a save of characteristic of 3+, plus or better, this weapon has a damage characteristic of D3. And that's, that's what's going to change it. You shoot this at a tank. 15 of them. Hit on 4, so we're not going to get any minuses. So, say 7 hits. 2 wounds, on average. That's... Probably going to spell says 2d3 damage. That's not bad. You should miss a unit marines or plague marines, anything like that, with more than one wound. So primus, primus marines, wound on threes. If you're getting six plus saves, you're doing d3 damage. So these guys should be killing primus marines, plague marines for their um, disgusting resilience. They're going to have to take a lot of saves to try and survive. Very good gun. Plasma Calvin. 36 inch range on standard, heavy D6. So you could have 18 shots, strength 7, minus 3, 1 damage. Plasma gun, very good. Supercharge, heavy D6 again, strength 8, minus 3, 2 damage. On a wall of a 1, the bear is slain. Okay, very good. Uh, heavy D6, normal standard is going to hurt things. Normal marines, even tanks, you're going to do some damage on. Supercharge, Strength 8. Win Marines on 2s. Very useful. You put Tech, tech Freeze Dominus right next to them or Crawl, and you'll be one ones to hit. Giving you less chance of killing your models. Very useful. Second weapons we can have either a Phosphorus Plaster, Rapid Fire, 24, Strength 5, Dung and Cover Safe from. Useful. Another couple of extra shots to put out. Or Cognus Flamer. Range of 8, Assault D6, Strength 4, this weapon hits automatically. In addition, when firing over watches this weapon, wall 2 dice when determining how many attacks it makes and discard for result. I like that. You have 4s in the unit and 
any light infantry, any light assault troops, they're going to be dubious about charging you there. You got, you, you're got putting out 3d6 strength 4 shots there, and you're re-rolling dice to, to see how much you're getting. Very nice. And again, these guys have bionics, so 6 plus normal save and heavy battle server. I like these guys. I think they're awesome. Um, I'm, I have one squad already with Heavy Grav and Kong's Flamer. And I'll be adding another squad and either Plasma Culvin and Heavy Grav Cannon are both very good. I'll probably go for Plasma Culvin just because I've got Heavy Grav Cannon already. These guys are tough. You put them in the center board, you put your Tech Feast Dominus next to him. You can either sit back or you can just wall slowly forward. If are not going to fight in combat, one got two attacks, strength five. You don't want them in combat, you just want to shoot things. That's what it's their job for. And as far as I can see, these are miles better than breaches. These guys will do damage, these guys will hurt. Yeah. I like these guys a lot. Okay, so that's all the troops' choices done. Three good choices rangers, vanguard, and destroyers. And then one bad choice, breaches, which I don't see any point in whatsoever. Okay, onto the elites. Servitors. Uh Ruben five. Veteran skill five. Blister skill five. Three tack oh three tacks. Strength three, toughness three, one wound, one tack. Leaves you with a six, four plus. So they're not great. What do we got? Uh each arm, server arm, so server arm. Times two strength, so we've got a strength six, minus two save, three damage. Not bad. However, we minus one hit. So instead of hitting on the really good five plus, we're hitting on six plus. So then I couldn't do anything come at. Um, we can now plasma cannons, multi melters, or heavy bolters. However, up to two models may replace their servo arm with heavy bolter, plasma cannon, or melt gun. And we have four of them. So if you have a squad and you have two with plasma cannons, then you've still got two walking around with the Eustace Servo Arm. So I, I, I don't see the point of these guys being in the force. Mind Lock, Servo does improve their weapon, both their weapon skill and ballistic skill to 4+, plus, and the leadership to 9, while well, within 6 of any friendly tech priests. Okay, so you'll be hitting them better. Put them within 6 of a tech priest, and they'll become better. Ah. Uh, there's better choices. I can understand put some of these guys in to look cool. If you had if you, if you got the points, you just throw them in. But there's better choices, better things to spend points on. Yeah, I, I don't make them. Um, the next, let's have a look. Okay, the next elite, Cybernetic Tate Smith. Movement 6, Weapon Skill 3 plus, Bliss Skill 3 plus, Strength 4, Toughness 4, 4 wounds. Two tacks, he's debating two plus save, so he's tough. Nice little character walking around. Gamma pistol, range of 12, pistol one, so one shot. Strength six, minus three, AP, two damage. And we roll to wounds against vehicles. Nice little gun, and a power fist. We all know what that does, so he's going to be hitting on fours in combat. And he's got massive machines. He can put D3 wounds back on to cast down robots within three, once we're turn very useful and a fact field nice little character however his main use is going to be scorting these guys the castellan robots he allows them to change their how they work during the game but we'll get onto that very useful character and then we have the rust doggers the kind of rust doggers movement eight so they're fast let go three three plus this is go three plus strength four toughness three Two wounds, three attacks, leadership six, four plus, and their, their princeps has got leadership seven and four attacks. Useful. Very not bad. Weapons we can have. We can have the chord claw, chord claw. Strength user, so strength four. AP, da AP nothing, D3 damage. Can only make one attack each time you wound on a six. The target suffers D3 more wounds instead of no damage. 
That's good. Transonic Blades. Strength plus one. No AP. One damage. Each time make a six. There's weapon with tags of small wound instead of not a damage. And for razors, exactly the same. But we don't get a plus one strength. Again, do mortal wounds. So we can either have the cord claw or the and razor or the transonic blades. Either way, these guys are going to be putting a lot of mortal wounds on. Transonic blades, you've got three attacks each. Your strength five. There's a good chance you're going to be putting a lot of mortal wounds on units. Very good. Got bionics, six plus normal save. And we can have canticles. Nice little unit. And then we have the infiltrators. Same stats apart from the attacks are down one each. Only got two attacks. Princeps got three. These guys will overcome guns so they can shoot. Fletcher Blaster. Range of 12. Pistol 5. So 5 shots each. Strength 3. 1 damage. No AP. 5 shots each. Squad of 5 Vs. 25 shots. Hit on 3s. That's nasty. That'll hurt. Any any like infantry, anything that's only toughness three, they're gonna rip apart. Stub carbine, range eighteen, strength pistol three, four shots. You have five oars, fifteen shots, strength four, gain, very good. We're gonna have power swords, use you know power swords, minus three save, strength user, or tears guards, plus two strength, no minus, only one damage. Each hit of six causes three hits rather than one. So that's a lot of hits. These guys will murder light infantry. Absolutely destroy them. We're going to get extra hits. We're going to shoot them. They're going to hurt. So we can either have... What can we have? So we've come with Stub Carbine and Power Sword. And we're going to replace it with Fletcher Blaster and Taser Gord. And Taser Gord. Very good. Bionic, six plus a normal save. Infiltrators. During deployment, you can set this unit up. Uh, any movement phase it can reveal end of any of our movement phases it can reveal its location set on battlefield more than 9 for your any 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 model very good I think this is one of the few units in the game in the, this force that can actually set up in infiltrating or similar sort of deep striking sort of rules that's useful you can leave those to turn 3 bring them out on an objective hold it or bring them out first turn and destroy a heavy weapon squad or something. Very useful. Enemy units within three of any Skatari and infiltrators must subtract one from their leadership. That's good. You get them in combat stuff. We're going to take one lead, minus one leadership. Very useful. I like them a lot. And I think they're about 130 points for Rust Doggers. Armed up about 110. They're fairly, they're fairly cheap. You could have a squad of five of these. You could have lots of squads of five of these running around. Yeah, you could have three squads of these. First turn, come up and absolutely blitz one part of the battlefield, destroy somebody's whole flank. In theory, if obviously it's tanks and something can do anything, but if it's light stuff or if they can do it, these guys will murder light infantry. Next leads. Okay, I'm not good. Not gonna say this right. Full grit, full guide, electro priests. Movement six. Weapon skill three. Bliss skill four plus. Makes no difference. Got no guns. Strength three. Toughness three. One wound. Two attacks. Leech fate. Six plus save. Okay, we're not tough. What have you got for electro leech staff? Melee. Strength two. Plus two strength. So strength five. Win most things on threes or fours. Tanks, obviously, more, but still not bad. Minus two AP, so Marines only getting five plus. D3 damage, useful. Each time you make a wound off the roll of a six, this weapon, the target suffers D3 mortal wounds instead of normal damage. That's good. That's nasty. You have five of these, ten attacks, you're gonna get a couple of fours in. You have ten of these, you have ten of these, you're gonna get more. A lot of D3 wounds, mortal wounds coming in there. Very nasty. Vortigas field. All models of this unit have five plus and one save. 
Very good. Members unit. Complete the charge move. Pick one of the target units with charge on roll D6 for each model in the charging unit. Any rolls of a 6 inflict on roll wound on unit. So not only are we getting these attacks, you charge in, you have 10 of them. You're going to get a couple of extra mortal wounds in. These guys are going to hurt. Siphon Vigor, if your unit wipes out an enemy in 5 phase, then vulnerable save is increased to 3 plus for the rest of the battle. That's. Charge in. Kill a unit. Get 3 plus save. Awesome. If an act called devotion, each time a model will lose a wound on 5 6, it doesn't. So I've only got a 6 plus save. But we've got 5 plus save normally. If you kill someone, you get a 3 plus save, and then we're going to come back on the 5 plus. I see. You have a big unit of these guys. 10, if not more. Yeah, you can go up to 50. You could have 20. 20 of these guys will murder whatever they're touching on that. They're going to get so many more wounds coming through. These guys will take down pretty much anything. Okay, so the next unit, next elite, is the Corp Ascaria. Corp Ascaria, Electro Priests. Same stats as the other unit, the other unit Electro Priests. However, these guys have got Electrostatic Gauntlets. Range of 12, Assault 3, Strength 5, no AP, only one damage. However, each time you hit was 6 to hit, causes 3 hits. Going to put a lot of, lot of shot out and exactly the same in combat. Strength 5, 1 damage. Any 6 of hits, causing 3 hits rather than 1. Very nice. These guys still got Volkaist Field. So 5 plus in one. Charging unit, any model in combat on a 6. Mortal wound on unit. And fanatical devotion. So 5, 6. To ignore every wound. Again, another good squad. Don't think they're as good as these guys, but they're a bit more versatile because they can shoot. Either good shot, good units, have them in big... You want to have these more in big units, 10 plus models to make most of them. On a fast attack, Sidonian Dragoons, guys with big lances, movement 10, so very quick. Weapon skill 3. Plus, Bliss skill 3+, plus, strength 5, toughness 6, 6 wounds, 3 attacks, these should make 4 plus save. Not bad. They can have, for come with, the Taser Lance, melee re weapon, plus 3 strength, so these guys are strength 8 in combat. Minus 1 AP, AP, not bad. 2 damage each time, so each wound is getting through, but that's like a, that's a primaris marine dead, yeah? 2 wounds each. On roll of 6... Three hits instead of one. Not bad. And you can have that's for one one of them. You can have an additional five in units. So you have you could have five of these, and I think for about six, sixty-eight points each, something like that. Three hundred points, five of these. Going to put a lot of hits out. You can arm with radium jezzeels, range thirty, heavy two, strength five, only one damage buff. Target characters on on a six. Doing a mortal wound, but to do that, you replace the Taser Lance. Ah, I don't think it's worth it. Noskim, Phosphorus Serpenter, Assault 1, Strength 5, minus 1, no cover save. Only one, it's only one shot. Keep them cheap. Taser Lancers, push them forward. 10 inch movement, advance first turn, next turn charging. Hurt some units in combat. They do come with Bionics, so we've got 6 plus in run. And Incense Cloud. So minus one for all shots to get them against them. That's nasty, that. That's going to keep them alive. What else have we got? Broad Spectrum Data. Units win three of any mod models with with this. Start mouth is add one to leadership. So useful, but they're not going to be close to your models. They, if you want these guys ahead, hitting, round flanks, hitting the enemy. Next unit. Iron Strider, Ballisteria, fake Italian, Latin sound names. Okay, same stats as above. These guys, however, come with Cognus weapons. Cognus Art Cannon, Cognus Art Cannon, 40 inch range, 4 shots, strength 7, minus 1, 
two damage. Yuma fires weapon, even if model firing advanced, but you must subtract two from hit walls. So you're hitting on fives, you can move these guys, move them ten, hitting on fives. Nah, not bad, but we've got the range anyway, so you don't really need to move them, I don't think. Ten inches is enough to move these guys. Yeah, you're going to get minus one hitting on fours, but we've got 40 inch range. Same with last cannon. Two shots. Same. We've got 40 inch range. Do we need to move? Don't know. Still useful. Still a good unit. I prefer the goons because I like. I just think they look better. Just for Lance looks cool. But these guys still useful, and it's the only last cannon in the army. So getting last cannons in, useful. These guys don't come with the incest cloud off the goons, so they're not as survivable. But they're still a useful squad, and the last cannon always good to have last cannons. Okay, we're on to the heavy guys now, the big guys. Cast only robots. These guys are tough. Movement 8, so fast. Weapon skill 4, 4 plus ballistic skills, strength 6, toughness 7. Toughness 7. That's the same as a lot of tanks. Means most weapons are going to be wounded on 5s. It's going to take dedicated heavy weapons to wound these on 3s. 6 wounds, that's a lot. 3 attacks, leadership 10, 3 plus save. So they're tough already. They can either come with heavy phosphorus blasters, yeah, 36, heavy 3, strength 6, minus 2, 1 damage, no cover save. And they can come with 3 of them each. So that's 9 shots. 9 shots each. Hit on 4s. You put a tech priest dominus next to these guys. And they're going to hurt them. They're going to get rerolls to ones. They're going to be hitting a lot of times. Strength 6. Minus 2. A lot of damage done. Or they can have the inside combustor on top. So if you either have heavy phosphor blaster or the inner sign combustor on top. Inside combustor. Range of 12. Heavy D6. Strength 5. Minus 1. 1 damage. Hit automatically. So it's a large flamer and it's going to hit further. Not bad. Not bad at all. So you can either have that one or that one. Or you can have three of them. Castellan Fists. So instead of having three Heavy Phosphorus Blasters. Or two Heavy Phosphorus Blasters and the Combuster. You have Castellan Fists and one of the other. Plus four strength. So strength ten. Most things are going to get wounded on threes now. If not twos. Minus three. Most things have reduced six. Three damage each. Nasty. Three attacks each. Two of them. Six attacks, three hits. You're going to be doing a lot of wounds and stuff. Okay. Repulsive grid. Five plus in one will save against shooting attacks. Nasty. Addition, you roll a six. Repulsive grid. Saving for the unit that made the attack suffers a more wound. That's going to be nasty. Hurt some units. Battle protocols, and this is where the cybernetic data smith comes in. Okay, these guys, three protocols. You've got Aegis protocol, and this is protocol is in fact, you get plus one to your arm save, so you got a two plus, and your invulnerable save goes up, so you got four plus invulnerable save. Makes them extra tough, and that's the one we start with, and that's the one we've got all the time, unless you've got a cybernetic data smith and he changes them. Conqueror protocol, Ravis protocol is in fact, you can't shoot, but you can fight twice in the fight phase. So in combat, instead of having 6 attacks per unit, you're now getting 12 attacks of these guys. And that's going to rip apart pretty much anything in combat. And protocol, pro protector protocol, while this battle protocol is in effect, the unit cannot move a charge. But you can double the number of shots. So instead of having 9 shots each, these guys are now going to have 18 shots per model if you are all armed with heavy Phosphor Blasters. 18 shots per model. Hit on fours. Put a Tech Priest next to him. Tech Priest Dominus next to him. Be rolling ones. Those guys are going to put out a lot of firepower. Very nasty. And that's why you have the Cybernetic Dirt Smith him. Just to keep that choice so you can give him whatever battle protocol you need at the time. Very nasty. Very good unit. You could easily have four fees. You are two into two. 
one close combat, go forward, one not shooting to shoot back, do lots of damage. Or have them both exactly the same. Four of these guys in combat will be scary. Almost 500 points, but it'll be a scary 500 points. Four of these guys shooting. Very scary. You could be putting out 18 shots per person. So what that's 18 times 4. Almost 8 shots. Can't do maths off the top of my head. A lot of shots. A lot of damage. Very good. Okay, our next Ongi June our next heavy Ongi June crawler. Movement. This is the first model in the army which has a degrading stat line. It's normal movement eight, so not fast. Well fast for most infantry. This is skill three, three attacks, and this goes down so to movement six, four plus blitz skill, d three attacks, four last one, four movement, five plus blitz skill, one attack. I wouldn't worry about the attacks. These guys aren't meant to get into combat. Uh for meant to shoot. You come with as standard eradication beamer. Yeah. Heavy D6, strength eight, minus two D3 damage. When attacking units from twelve, this weapon's types to heavy D3, but resolve the shots with an AP of minus four and damage D6. That's nasty. Very nasty. You can also have a Cognus Heavy Stubber, 36 inch range, Heavy 3, Strength 4. When this weapon's fire, you can advance but minus 2. Not bad. Little side weapon. We can replace the Eradication Beamer with the Icarus Array. One weapon. And this is where I read it. And if I'm wrong, please leave a comment and let me know. This is one weapon. So all of this has to fire one unit. Yeah. It says when attacking this weapon, you can fire off your profiles below. It can't split it. However, it's got a did Diddleus missile launcher, 40 inch range, heavy one, strength seven, minus three, d6 damage. Nasty. Gatling rocket launcher, again, 40 inch range, like all the guns, heavy five, lots of shots, strength six, minus two, one damage. Not bad. And Icarus class cannon, auto cannon. 4 inch range, heavy 4, strength 7, 1 damage, 1, minus 1, 2 damage. However, these guys, this is aimed for flyers. Plus 1 to hit all fly models. Yeah, anything with fly. So that's any of the flyers, storm talons, storm ravens, void bombers, whatever, and fly. So anything like jump packs, jet bikes, subtract for minus 1 against all of the targets. So you're going to be hitting most of things on fours. But if you, you're shooting at a jetpack unit, it doesn't have supersonic, it's still got fly special rule, hitting on twos. And you'll destroy light flyers. Yeah, you'll absolutely hurt them. You're going to ruin most things like jet bikes and jump back infantry on threes, taking away most of the saves and doing a lot of damage. Very good. But it can only target one unit. Newton laser, 40 inch range, heavy D3, strength 10, minus 4, D6 damage. Treat damage rolls 1, 2, made it as weapon 3. So it's going to do 3 damage at least. It's got D3 shots, strength 10. Ruin most things on fees, most things aren't going to get saved, and it's going to do at least 3 damage. Use a few command points to make sure you're getting your hits. That's going to hurt. That's why you use it to fight land raiders and the big guys you need to kill. Now, the last gun you can have, Twin Heavy Phosphor Blaster. Range 36, Heavy 6, so lots of shots. Strength 6, minus 2, 1 damage. Don't get any cover save. That's not bad. Sit and board, shoot Devastators, shoot Heavy Weapon Squads. Going to take down most of... They're not going to get cover save. Going to be down to 5 plus saves. You're going to be killing them. Not bad. You could have a couple of these. You could take... If you knew you are going to fight lots of flies, take Icarus Arrays. Or jet bikes, and you'll hurt them. If you know you're taking a lot of tanks, Newton laser, and punish them because they're going to pull so much damage out. At least three damage a shot. That's good. The other two guns are not uh, all right. I think they're fairly cheap as well. And well, you're getting more shots for these guys. Still very good. Nice little, nice little unit. 
Also, got five plus vulnerable save, and if you've got another one within six, you get reroll ones. Useful. Very useful. And they can move without firing. Ah, I like that a lot. Very good. Okay, so that's all of the ad mech and skatar units, and then we're on to the knights. There's been no rules changes. The only difference is Quest to Mechanicus, Household. So you name your household and that's it. But don't don't do anything that benefits that, it's just a name. These don't benefit from mechanicals. They they can be healed by the Tech Feast Dominus and Crawl. But we're only going to get one wound back. They're still very good. As usual, standard, strength eight, toughness eight, twenty four wounds, four attacks. And degrading. You've got all of them. You've got Knight Errand for Paladin, Warden for Gallant, and the Crusader. If you're going to have a Knight, they're very good. You can get cheap ones. The Knight Gallant is the cheapest. It You could give it a Heavy Stubber, Reaper Chainsword, Fun Strike Gauntlet, and I think comes. Just around 400 points. Cheapest knight you're going to get. If you just want something nice and big in your army and you've run out of points, one of these, send it forward, get into combat, butcher things, blow up, kill you more things. Very good. Cheapest and the go up in points, as you know. So a knight errant with its thermal cannon, it's not too bad. Before can send it forward, shoot things, try and kill before you die. Knight Paladin. The battle cannon, the rapid fire battle cannon is awesome. You're going to be putting a lot of shots out of the enemy and doing a lot of damage, and you still get chainsaw to fight. But I've personally, I think the best knight, Crusader, rapid fire battle cannon, Avenger Gatling cannon, four missiles on top. Cow pass weapon, so, so four more just to get shots out. If you're going to spend those points, equip it with every gun you can have. You've still got Titanic feet in combat. Make three hits, rolls it for each attack made of this weapon. So instead of having four attacks, you've got 12. Strength user, so strength eight, minus two D3 damage. That's still going to hurt everything but most dedicated assault units. That's still going to be nasty. Stand by back and shoot. And just blow the enemy away before they even get close to you. Best night in the game, I think, at the moment. And that's all the units. Lots of good ones there. I think you could... There's different styles you could have to do with this army. You could go for shooting lines. You could have rows upon rows of Skatai Rangers. And Vanguard, backed up by... On June crawlers and destroyers, and the big guys to put your shooting on a few cast iron robots and a to give you even more shooting. And you could just certainly back line and try and shoot the enemy off the board before they get there. You could go for a mix, you could have some of these guys, you could have some just some basic troops or destroyers. You could also have the priests to get into combat, some rune stalkers. And infiltrators and try and attack and combat while you're shooting them as well. Nasty. Very good. Or you could go for pure close combat. You could have Rustockers, infiltrators, a couple of squads of these jumping up all over. Rustockers run forward. Cast down robots with fists going forward. Electro priests, big units of them. With dragoons, push forward, hit the enemy in close combat and try and kill them there. Lots of style of them. And to help them, we thought for different styles, I mentioned slightly earlier, we have the dogmas, okay? And these are similar to the Space Marine Tactics chapters, tactics. We've got Mars, Gryer, Metallica, Lucius, Agrippina, Stygius, and Riser. Okay, Mars. Each time you randomly determine which canticle of the Shire is being cantered, roll two dice instead of one. Okay? All units of this dogma receive the benefit of both results instead of just result of first dice. If two players roll, no digital canticle is counted fast turn. 
that's good. That's giving you more chance of getting Shell Charm, of getting the ones you want. That's useful. Grier. Well, D6 each time model with first Dogma Slain or Fleas on a 6 fat model fuses to yield. I have a wound that slew is ignored of model does not flee. However, Forge World units, so Grier units with this Dogma cannot fall back unless there's a friendly character on the battlefield. That's, that's it, sorry. If you're going for an army with lots of Skatari, lots of one wound models, that'd be useful because effectively it's giving them 6 plus female pain. Yeah. Big units, big monsters, or big units, big wound units. It's only on the last wound. Yeah, so it's not going to come into play that much. If you're going for pure Skatari, lots and lots of men, you could have 30, 40, 50 men backed up by tanks and other things. That's useful. Giving you a feeling of pain pretty much for the little models. Bit of a downside if your characters die, you're not going to be able to fall back. But you just hide your characters. So if you're going for lots of Skatari, lots of little guys, go for that. Metallica, Relentless March. If your unit of this dogma advances, it can ignore the penalty for firing assault weapons and treats all rapid fire weapons as it is with armed with assault weapons until the end of the turn. E.g. rapid fire weapon is treated as an assault one weapon. Not bad. Advance forward, put some shooting down. Yeah, it's all right. Lucius for Soul of Blessing. When making saving throws, units of his dogma treat enemy attacks with an arm penetration characteristic of minus one as having an arm penetration of one set. That's good. Um, so basically, it's a bolt rifle now for the primary, which means has minus one. Auto cannons shooting at them. Instead of getting minus one saves, it's, it's going to count as nothing. It's useful. It's useful. A Gripner, staunch defenders. When firing off watch, units of dogma hit on a 5 plus instead of only 6 irrespective modifiers. That's good. Hit on 5 and overwatch. Anybody who played Dark Angels in the last edition knows how nasty hitting on anything but 6 on overwatch is. You're getting there, basically doubling your hits. That's useful. You're sitting back on your back lines, let the enemy come to you and get another round of shooting for a charge. Not bad. Stygious Shroud Protocols. Your opponent must subtract one from their hit rolls when shooting a unit with his dogma if they're more than 12 away. That's not bad. That's good, that. It's similar, I think, to the Night Lord's special rule. Special rule. Basically, that means for first turn, first two turns, your enemy's going to be hitting on minus one. Yeah? That's useful. Very useful. It's going to keep your men alive. And Riser, red in Cog and Claw. You can boy roll ones. We roll wound rolls off one in five phase for units of this dogma. That's useful. You're going for pure close combat. Assault. Adeptus Mechanicus army, that'd be useful. Running forward, we all want to wound. That's going to hurt. It's going to hurt the enemy a lot. I like that. There's, there's some good ones, but I think the best one is Stygis for that minus one to shoot from 12 inches away. Very good. In case of those dogmas. And now we're going on to stratagems. Okay, now on to the stratagems. And there's some good ones in here. There's a few which allow different units to get rerolls to hit in the shooting and combat phase, or plus one to hit. Um, one of the ones that jumps out to mind, Zealous Congregation. You know, Lecto Priests get to fight again. It's worth three command points. You do that on your unit of 10, 15 Lecto Priests. All those more wounds they're going to do, I'm going to get to do it twice. Very nasty. The main one that jumps out for is this. Machine Spirit Resurgent. And this one, I'll just zoom in. Okay, this one allows you, regardless of how many wounds you are, to use the top end of your damage table on one vehicle for one turn. 
and it applies to Adeptus Mechanicus vehicles or Cresta Mechanus units. So you're Imperial Knight, it's damaged, it's on a couple of wounds left. It's managed to survive turn, but now it's severely gimped. It's not going to be doing much. For one command point, you use this, and it's going to be firing a full ballistic skill. Get all its attacks. It's going to go down next turn, but it's going to go out in a blaze of glory. And that's that's worth it. It's, it gives that knight an extra round of being a threat. Then we have Forge World specific stratagems. Fresh Converts for the Gripner. A unit of servitors, unit of destroyers, unit of breaches. One command point, you can bring back a unit. Power level 5 or less, so that's only servitors. Two command points. Bring back a unit of power rating 10 or less. A unit of destroyers, it's suffered a few wounds, it's been locked in combat. Take it off the board. Bring it on from reserve. Back to its full level. Very nasty. Doubles the survivability of that unit. It's going to come back. It's going to get a shoot. Need your teleporting for Lucius. Deep strike a unit anywhere. Nine away from the enemy. Very good. Unit castle and robots come down. Open up fire. Then charge. Nasty. Candlestine. <laughs> Sorry. Candlestine. Infiltration. Stygius. Stratagem. Infiltrate. Set up anywhere out nine inches away from your unit. Your unit of 20 priests. Set up 20, nine inches away. Move in. First turn charge. Very nice. Miser. Get plasma specialists. Plus one wound for the plasma weapons. That's not bad. Grier. 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 Steel Mind Iron Logic, 4 plus to deny Psychic Power. It's alright. It's not too bad. Not as good as some of the others. Wrath of Mars. Use the stratagem before Mars unit shoots. And on a 6, if you hold a wound, suffers a mort. The unit suffers a mort wound in addition to other damage. Put that on a unit of 10. Vanguard. Iridium Carbines. 30 shots, any 6 to wounds, mortal wound, not bad, not bad at all. Deafening Assault for Metallica, uh, use a start to start from our first pick, one of the Metallica units, all in immune, within 6, minus 1 for leadership test, it's, that's not too bad. And then we've got two ones, Adeptus Mechanicus, these ones are aimed at knights, okay, so you can give it a knight, Canticles, which is useful, or an extra plus one to a Titan Shield. Very, so giving it a four plus in the rubble safer turn. Useful if you're going to be coming under a lot of fire. Very good. Okay, Warlord traits. Got some good ones, individual ones. Um, land to be walls. Not too bad. One I like. Necro mechanic. Each time your Warlord uses an ability to repair Fend model, it gains an additional wound. That doesn't say just a Deputant Mechanicus, so you can do that on your Knight. Get two wounds back a turn. That's useful. Our Prime Hereticon. Friendly Forge World Infantry Units from 6. The Warlord we roll all hit rolls in 5 phase. If you're going for a close combat Deputant Mechanicus army, you take that. Put your, put your Warlord very Primus. Dominus, charge forward, get all those rewards. And then we have individual ones as well for each of the Forge Worlds. So Mars, add three to the range of any aura abilities on your Warlord's data sheet, such as Lord of the Machine Cult. You put that on your Tech Priest Dominus, instead of having a six inch bubble, it's got a nine inch bubble for his reward ones. And this is the one the Bellas House Call comes with. So, within 9 inches of him, everything's getting 3+. plus. Everything's re-rolling. It all hits. It's shooting. Very good. Then we've got other ones. Grya changes weapons fire. Metallica, you can fall back and shoot, but minus 1. 
within 60 Wallard. And that's useful. Lucius, plus one wall, seven Wallard. That's good, but really don't need Wallard getting shot. So it's all right. Same as Agrippner. Minor, well, reduce damage to Wallard by one. Useful again. Zenrite studies fastidious. Add one to Wallard. To wound rolls made from Warlord against units that do not have Chaos in Primo Line Faction. So any aliens that you're going to be wounding. Easier. And finally, Riser. When setting up your Warlord, choose one of the weapons and it increases its damage and strength by one. Not bad. Not bad at all. So you could be having like two damage on your pistol. Useful. Okay, so now on to the artifacts, the relics. Arcana Mechanicum. We've got a few which are just additional better weapons so you pay to cog tooth is a better omnisium axe minus two strength plus two strength minus two ap damage free big little axe put his dexterous domus make him harder anzons i'll just say this one perzord generator extra d6 strength four attacks every combat that's useful you all to ones against wounds against infantry not bad and then if you the this one here, the Autocadus of Arkenland. Start of your turns, the bear of this relic heals one wound. In addition, when bear uses an ability to, prevent, to prepare a friendly Adeptus Mechanics model, you may re roll the dice of how many wounds. Useful. So he's going to be getting D3 back a turn, and he's going to get that one a turn if he's a Techfree Dominus. That's four wounds a turn he could be getting back. That's nasty. And then we've got some of ones. Uncreate a Gauntlet, an extra special power fist. The Phosphen Phosphenix Phos Phoenix replaces Phosphor Serpent on your Tequis Dominus, makes it a bit better. Again, not bad. The Raminant ra ra of a Techno Martyr gives him 6 plus female pain. It doesn't say you can't have that along with Tenacious Survivor, so you could have two 6 plus saves. But yeah, it's, it's alright, keep them alive a bit more. Okay, what else do we have? The Skull of Elder Nicola. Which, once per turn, unleash it. All models within 2d6 on 2 plus suffer mortal wound. Not bad. And remember, you're getting all these for free, so even if you can't think of anything, just take one, put it in your character, it could come useful. The Omniscient Mask. You can be all five, all hit walls, and fight first for Fenny's guitar units within 6 off a bearer. Again, you're going for a massive close combat attack. Four of any guy. All your, all your infiltrators and rust doggers are going to be re-rolling hits. Very useful. And then we've got set ones for different forge worlds. And they're, they're all alright. Nothing major on them all. But worth taking if you just want to have a bit of fluff. And that's pretty much the whole army book again you've got the points there very useful and a few stratagems here nothing really massively different than normal destroy vehicles um, without blowing up to get points use it randomly decide you can't to get a point some very good ones there and that's the army book done it's a good book it's got some Downside, it doesn't have, I think these guys are the only army that don't have any sort of transport capacity. They don't have anything. For cap There's only a few ways you can get infiltrators and that's either with the um, infiltrator unit or using a few stratagems for specific forge roads. Which... Only two of those can actually have a deep strike. There's one deep strike and there's one infiltrate one. So you're not going to get much. It's not going to be a fast army. It's not going to be setting up in different places of board unless you go out your way to have lots of, lots of Sakarian infiltrators. It's an army that's going to be either designed to sit back and shoot or personally or charge. You've got lots of guns and you've got the ability to fight in combat. You can do a mix and have lots of different stuff. Yeah. Or you can go for one way or the other. I, at the moment, I have a mix. I've got a few in Vanguard, 
I've got Unifan, I've got Unirangers, Destroyers, um, some robots, a Dragoon, Onga, Dunecrawler, a few characters. So I'm very similar to... Uh, is it? Something similar to this. And this is the army that, sort, that will be appearing on the channel hopefully in the next few weeks. Very soon, I've got destroyers, I've got Vanguard, I've got Rangers, I've got Infiltrators, I've got, an I've got a couple of, couple of Onga Dune Callers, I've got some robots, got a Dagoon, and I've got a Knight to bulk it up. However, I think, I've, I've read through this, and I've looked at some stratagems, and I think I'm going to aim for more close combat oriented units of priests with their staves, backed up with infiltrators, and rust stalkers and castellan robots will hit hard. These guys to go on the flanks and take out some other units, be a nasty army, and that's what I'm going to aim for. But before then, we're going to have the army on the channel, I'm going to show you how these guys work. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any thoughts of what I've said, if you've got any ideas of how to run the Adeptus Mechanicus, please let us know. Leave a comment. Comment? Leave a comment. Leave a comment and we'll get back. We'll reply. Get a discussion going. If you like the video, leave a like. Take care and keep on sixes.